Hello, um, in this lecture and the remainder ones of the semester, we're going to be uh, moving on to perhaps a more fun topic than some of what we've been doing, um, which is machine learning. We've uh, laid a lot of the mathematical foundations that we need here um, for the rest of what we'll be doing in CF320. I'd like to um, have you recall that there's three different kinds of machine learning. Um, one, we just simply aren't doing in, in this course, and that's reinforcement learning. And um, so the important ones for you kind of have differentiated in your mind are supervised learning, and unsupervised learning. And um, in just a quick recap, when we have supervised learning um, and say a table, usually there's a special column that's considered uh, uh, the label column. And what we want to do is we want to predict, predict that one based on the others. Um, now that special label column, it might be numeric, um, in which case um, the type of uh, supervised learning we'll be doing is a regression. Um, if it's categorical, then we're going to be doing classification. Um, there's other cases where we want to learn something about the data, uh, but there are no labels, no special columns. We're just kind of looking for general patterns. Um, for example, maybe covariance between different pairs of columns. Um, so we've done a lot of kind of foundational stuff with linear algebra. That's going to help us. And um, in, in general, uh, machine learning borrows from a lot of other, other fields and kind of is based on them. And so some of these things that we learned in linear algebra are directly supervised, non-supervised learning techniques. Um, for example, when we were doing the linear regression, uh, the least squares method, uh, that's an example of a supervised learning uh, regression. And we were doing principal component analysis. There was no real special labeled column, uh, but we were just trying to see, well, how much uh, kind of actual uh, independence is there among columns, right? How much information can be captured in, in, in maybe fewer columns, right? And that was an unsupervised uh, learning technique because we don't really try to do any sort of prediction there. Um, so, so we've already seen for supervised, we've seen regression, and so today I'm going to be talking about the other type, which is classification. Um, in particular, for classification, we're going to be using something called uh, logistic regression, uh, which is a very confusing name. A logistic regression model is actually used for classification. It's not used for um, kind of regression information, right? So we're going to be using logistic regression for quantitative um, information. Um, and, uh, and, and then the other thing I want to do today is I want to talk about um, whether or not a model is good. How can we evaluate that? And, um, and machine learning brings in various techniques and best practices for kind of uh, figuring out if you're learning something meaningful or not. Okay, so first uh, regression and classification. And for both of these, the typical steps that you might perform are you know, first train your model after you've selected the model, of course. Um, test your model, uh, try to run on some test data to evaluate whether it's good. And then finally, actually start using your model um, uh, in the real world to make new predictions. And, um, and since that's where we're headed, right, I mean, that's our big goal is we want to make new predictions. Um, I'm going to start there, right? We're going to kind of compare um, two uh, different models, uh, a classification model, a regression model, um, and, and then kind of talk later about how I actually uh, derive those models. Um, so here I have some data. Um, I have some X columns, right, kind of my inputs. Um, I have this kind of constant column just containing ones that is just going to make um, my life easier later uh, when I'm trying to multiply coefficients by these things. Um, I may have a, a vector of weights, and uh, it helps if I can put both the uh, um, coefficients on variables and uh, and on one in here. And then I have two things that I might want to predict. I have y, right, which is a numeric field. And so for that, I'm going to have to do a regression and or have a regression model. And then z is uh, categorical information. Here I guess I have two categories, true and false. Um, another word for category is classes. I'd say this is a two-class problem. Um, eventually, we're going to be seeing cases where I have kind of more than two classes. Maybe I have, um, uh, you know, rock, paper, scissors, or, or kind of other, uh, you know, fixed number of, of distinct categories, but they aren't really numbers. Um, so for convenience, I have this function here, this get row. And, uh, and when I run this, uh, let me actually try not run this again. Uh, sorry, let me just try to run these cells. Okay, now oh, it's going slow. Okay, and, and what this is basically doing is it's pulling off one row at a time to be, uh, to be a horizontal vector down here. And you can see it's kind of uh, a two-dimensional, so we can uh, say which way it's going. 
here I'm coupling off this next one. Right, you can see that, that those are the numbers I now have down here. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna be using that later. And, um, and so I wanna create uh, or kind of use a model for both regression and classification. And, uh, and remember that a model is really, you can just think of it as a function, right? Uh, uh, it's a function where I take some input, for example, maybe the input is a row um, of the data, and then it's returning something. It's usually returning a prediction. And when I'm doing regression, the thing I'm predicting is a number. And when I'm doing classification, the thing is, that I'm predicting is a category. And, um, and for this data, right, we can see that those categories are just true or false. Now, when we're having these functions uh, that are our models of machine learning, um, rather than kind of writing a different code for them, what we're really usually doing is performing um, like kind of some numeric operations on our inputs. Maybe we're multiplying, um, multiplying these vectors by other vectors or, or even by matrices. Um, we might be doing other operations. And so the key to kind of figuring out what goes inside of the function is to have the right values in the vectors or matrices. Okay, and, um, and so in this case, I actually have uh, two vectors, right? And these two vectors are giving the information that we need for our regression model and our classification model. And, and it actually, uh, the code for these uh, is gonna look very similar. And, um, and in this case, well, what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna change this to lower case, right? Because I'm gonna take a, an actual row in. Um, I'm gonna multiply that row like this uh, by these, right? I'm gonna do the dot product. So I could say numpy dot dot product row uh, by vector one if I wanted to, um, or equivalently, I could do this. And, um, and, and well, let's just run that. So I'm gonna say, uh, for the regression model, uh, what do we predict for row one? Right, and, and this one, right, it's, uh, we're trying to predict the Y column. Let me run that and I see it's 32.94. Um, is that good? Let me see. Uh, it is 32.94. Um, let, let me go down to the next one and hope that I get 2.7 for my Y value. I do this, do I get 2.7 when I go to row two? Uh, about, right, it's, um, it's not perfect, but I'm kind of predicting something. All right, so this is an example of a regression model, right? It's kind of putting out these numbers that are, um, that are, are numeric, right? They could kind of be any, any number. And, um, and these coefficients that I got, maybe I got those from a least squares uh, method. Actually, not maybe, I did get those from least squares. Okay, so let's talk about how we're gonna do this other one. Uh, this one's actually gonna be very similar, right? Um, I, I, you notice I have a different vector and I have different values here, different coefficients. Uh, but the general strategy is the same. I'm gonna multiply that row by my vector. And, um, and let's try doing this. I'm gonna call classification model on, uh, on maybe that first row that I had, uh, like so and I get four, and, uh, and that's not great, right? I mean, we could have expected it, right? Since I'm basically doing the same thing in these two, but, but what I would really like, right? For this one, I'm hoping I'm gonna get the answer true, okay? Now, um, now there's different ways we could uh, kind of deal with this. We have to somehow convert uh, this into either a true or a false. And um, I'm sorry, we're gonna, we need to convert this to a true or a false. And, uh, and the way that we'll, we'll do that um, is we're going to treat one as true and zero as false, okay? Um, so we can kind of map back and forth between these categories and, and, and kind of these numbers. Um, still not great, right? Because if one is true, uh, what in the world is four? And um, to solve this problem, we're gonna do something called uh, use something called the logistic sigmoid function. Often people just call it sigmoid for short. Um, this is the definition of it. I don't really care if you remember that. Uh, what I do care about is that you remember how it how it looks, right? Here I'm plotting a bunch of x values uh, for the sigmoid, and uh, the sigmoid function is s-shaped. Um, when I'm at zero, uh, when I'm at zero, right? When I'm at zero. Yeah, that means I'm coming up to about. Uh, uh, you know, 0.5, and then eventually it kind of saturates at one, and then if I have a very negative number, it kind of saturates at, at uh, zero. 
right? So, so that's great, right? Because if uh, if if I'm going to say that one is true and um, and zero is false, well then this is kind of giving me a spectrum, right? So what I can do is uh, I'm going to actually pull this up here. I use this thing um, for this classification model to work, right? Um, you know, multiplying my row by my vector, not good enough, right? Because I kind of get any crazy number. If I take the sigmoid of that number, uh, well, guess what? I get something between uh, zero and one. And this is commonly interpreted as the probability that it's one, right? So, so when I get this back, um, what this is telling me is that the model says there's a 99% chance that row zero is true. And let me actually just check out that. Cool, it is true. Um, I'm going to try row one and two, and I should expect true and then false. So let me let me try some other ones. Say that. Yeah, okay, well, row one was true too. A uh, very high probability that it is. What about two? And uh, and only a 15% chance here, right? So, so this is kind of returning meaningful probabilities for me. And um, and those probabilities might be interesting in and of themselves if I'm trying to gauge um, how sure the model is. Uh, but in other cases, I just want an answer. I want not a probability, but I want to know, well, is it, is it true or false? And, and that's going to be easy to do because I can just, uh, well, if I round it, I'm going to get either a zero or, or a one. And, um, and of course, then I could say as type as uh, Boolean. Uh, and now I'm actually getting true, right? Which is what I wanted, right? And, um, and, and that works just great. Um, if I wanted to, right? Uh, the kind of the beauty of kind of using NumPy and, and linear algebra is that I can either pass in a row or I could pass in, in the whole data. Right, so let me just do that briefly. I'm going to say classification. Well, first off, let me figure out what my data is. Here I have my data frame. Um, and I want to kind of take a slice of this. And, um, well, I have a row slice, a column slice. Um, I want all the rows. And then for the columns, I want x1 through 1. And it turns out when I'm kind of doing these slices based on, on strings, uh, just what? It is inclusive. Right, so normal, normally I'd be kind of going one past what I actually wanted out here, right? Because slices over these are, are inclusive. And, um, oh, and you know why, what I forgot is I have to say down location to do that. Let me get that thing. And, um, and now if I want to, I can pass in that data to my classification model, right? And instead of just doing it on one row, it should do it on all the rows. And it does, I get true, true, false, true, true, you know what I want to do just to kind of make this um, there is I'm just trying to say add this as my predicted z value and, and then I'm just trying to look at my data frame and I can see that this model right apparently apparently I chose pretty good numbers for uh, for this vector because I'm often predicting the same thing as um, uh, as the original, right? Is that always true? I guess in every case here, it's true. You know, let's just do a quick count for the fun of it and try to see how well it's performing. So I want to say df of how often does z, how often is that the same as my predicted z? Um, apparently a lot because I have lots of trues. Um, how many trues do I actually have? value counts, and, um, and well, it's like 95% of the time, which is predicting accurately. Okay, so I'm going to break off there. Uh, but what I want you to notice is that once we actually kind of figure out what goes in these vectors, right, uh, using the models is, is kind of pretty simple, right? Actually, the kind of deploying a model to make predictions is relatively straightforward. So all the fun stuff will be in, in kind, of develop, kind of pulling out these uh, values from from the data, right, and then evaluating how good they are. And that's true whether we're doing a regression model that returns a number or a classification model that, that returns, you know, true or false or some other fixed number of classes.